there's, I think, a fairly common mindset of people when they first encounter Theravada Buddhism and kind of come across these teachings in the Pali Canon, like one of the ones which you do find again and again is this encouragement towards seclusion, or you find these discourse on the, the rhinoceros horn. And it was certainly like monastics, you know, or, you know, <clears throat> certain type of someone who's new to Buddhism, they read these suttas and they're really inspired and they think, okay, seclusion and just practicing by myself, for myself, enlightenment, that's the way to go. But it sounds yeah. like, you know, you're talking about having a relationship with the world and you gave a talk um, a while back about, it's about more than just us. And I'm curious if you could, could talk to how to balance these two things, these two truths, I guess. Well, I mean, the thing is, is, is I mean, it's kind of like, like, a, it's kind of like Ajahn Chah when he was asked, I mean, it, was, it was actually Jack Cornfield frustrated at Ajahn Chah's teaching. He said, you know, sometimes you teach us to do this and sometimes you teach us to do that. And sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll go together and, and it doesn't make, you know, and he was just really frustrated. Uh, and, uh, and Lung Po just kind of laughed and said, well, you know, really all I'm doing is trying to, trying to, I'm looking at people and they're walking down a road and they're going off to the left into, into a ditch and, you know, getting, they're going to wander off and get lost. And I say, go right, go right. And in the same, and say, oh, yeah, sometimes I see people going off to the right and gonna, they're going to go off into the ditch and get lost in the bushes. I said, I go left, go left, go left. And it's, so the, the teachings are balances so that, and, and, and the, our Western propensity for glorifying the individual picks up on the, the teachings where the Buddha says, uh, learn how to be on your own, learn how to, 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 to be in solitude. And, and, and then we think that that's, that's, that's everything. But it overlooks, you know, all of the teachings where the Buddha is saying, uh, you know, when, when Ananda sort of say, half of the holy life is, is having good companionship, good friendships. Uh, and, and the Buddha said, no, it's not half the holy life, it's the whole of the holy life. So that, that, that sense of, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it's, you can think, well, I, I can have good companionships without having to actually live with anybody. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> uh, so that, that there's, there, there are times when it's really helpful to, uh, to have solitude. It's really helpful to realize because as human beings, we're pretty hardwired to interact with each other. And certainly uh, in 2,500 years ago, uh, in, in, in Indian culture, um, to be on your own uh, is like a, uh, it's like a, a punishment. <laughs> and, 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 but it's sort of like, well, the Buddha looking to, to try to get us to have a, an independence and freedom of heart. How do you, how, how do you, how do you learn how to be on your own? Uh, so that those, those two are, they're not mutually exclusive. They're both aspects of our being that we have to learn how to navigate and establish a sense of, of say, maturity and freedom within that. How do we live with other human beings uh, and not be completely neurotic and messed up about it? Uh, and uh, or just yeah, creating and making ourselves into a pain in the butt to others. Um, or how do we how do we learn to live on our own where we feel comfortable and 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 happy and and not uh, and not fearful of like oh god I got to go meet those people <laughs> you know you know and you know go into paroxysms of proliferation. And because, because of having to deal with people. So it's a, 
it's like it's like how do we how do we not suffer in any condition yeah, thank you lomport uh, another like balancing question is <clears throat> So, you know, there's talk in the forest tradition, Ajahn Man talking about jittam or like the, the primal mind or the, the mind source. You gave a talk, or at least there's a talk that's titled um, that you gave called The Underlying Radiance of the Mind. And, you know, Ajahn Lumpur Samedo will talk about the need to trust, you know, trust, have faith or, you know, believe in this underlying radiance of the mind and to really trust in it. And I, I feel like there have been times when I've asked you about this type of mind and you've actually, you know, cautioned not like believing in it, but actually being wary of it, like don't fool yourself. So I'm curious if you could talk about the, the balance between having faith in this original mind versus being skeptical of mm -hmm. something like that. Well, I mean, one of the things, again, it comes back to, 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 suffering the the felt sense of how we how we relate to uh because uh, one of the you know what is it that makes us kind of unique <coughs> in in the uh <coughs> in the realm of of uh, you know we have we have self-reflective minds you know as human beings and uh, so that we can reflect on ourselves and we can reflect on our experience. Uh, so then being able to <clears throat> take that reflection, you know, we can, with that, that reflection, we can turn it into, you know, more externalized, um, yeah, say intellectualizing of the world around us. Uh, or turning it or idealizing it and and and, <clears throat> and that is that's actually separating ourselves from experience because it's it is an idea and ideas are not a direct experience and so that <clears throat> in terms of belief it's not belief in terms of, of uh, you know, your traditional approach from, you know, I think from a, you know, Judeo-Christian perspective or Abrahamic religion perspective of, you know, you have to believe. Uh, and, and what, you know, the Buddha is, is saying, you have to experience this for yourself. Um, that sense of, you know the nature of of the dhamma being um, yeah sanditiko it's to be to be seen each one each you know to to see for oneself so that that uh, but it's not to be how do you say externalized or put outside of one's experience by making it a, a, a philosophy or a, or a belief system. <clears throat> belief is, <clears throat> is more an experience of, <clears throat> it's a faith experience. Uh, and, <clears throat> you know, and sometimes that, that, that uh, <clears throat> it's hard to talk <clears throat> about, because that one, you know, our language is conditioned by our culture, and as soon as you talk about faith or belief, then you know we think in terms of of our, you know, sort of Western conditioning and, and expectation around that. Uh, but there is an element of, um, say, like you know, wisdom. You know, wisdom is is let's say in our uh, our tendency for wisdom uh, is to you know we we reflect on it, we investigate it, we we look at it carefully, and there is a certain 
acceptance that's gained through that investigation and that analysis. And certainly that, that's actually one of the <clears throat> uh, early descriptions of, of, of Buddhism uh, when the, 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 the teaching of, of the Buddhas was called a vibhajavadin. It, it was a teaching of analysis. Uh, and so the focus on wisdom, which is, is, uh, is important. I mean, the Buddha really was great at being able to step back and analyze things clearly. But analysis on its own is not going to uh, take one to a place of relinquishment and letting go. Uh, and, and, and surrender uh, so that that quality of faith or belief, which is more of a heart quality. You know, the, uh, faith or, uh, 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 is much more willing to let go. Wisdom always wants a little bit more knowledge, <laughs> a little bit more information. <laughs> You know, so but you know you're always looking at that the that, that, the the balance, but but certainly that 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 there is a place for 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 faith and and belief in that sense of one has to give oneself to the practice. One has to give oneself to the to the you know, the willingness to you know, give oneself to truth and to give oneself to the way things truly are and not hold back anything. <clears throat> Thank you for those words. Um, you know, you, you speak about this determination to give oneself to, to truth and, um, you know, embodying faith and aligning one's life with these, these values and this real vision of Dhamma. I'm curious how you would you know, I, I know so many people right now who it feels like, uh, in the words of Ajahn Sona, they've got one foot in the monastery and one foot on a banana peel. And, you know, it's like they, they've had this insight, they've, you know, seen the power of the Dhamma, and yet they find themselves in worldly conditions, which are, are difficult, and just trying to find peace in that situation. Um, what advice would you give to such, to such folk, uh, Longpore? Well, I, one is that, you know, not to, uh, um, not to overlook the power of the, because oftentimes we want to find a resolution either through view or through practice. Like I, if I only got the right practice down, then I would, but they overlook the power of, yeah, of giving oneself to, to just to virtue and integrity, um, of generosity and compassion. Those are 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 are, are overlooked because they're kind of they're kind of you know you know a bit kind of. You know, it's wet, <laughs> mushy, <laughs> but it's, but it's you know it, it, it's it's but it's really easy to overlook how 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 transformative that is, and and then that sense of trust of one's trust of oneself and trust in Dhamma, um, you know, really comes from, from experience. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you have, to, you have to put the teachings into, into practice and, 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 and live it. You can't, you, you can't, you, you can't really hold back and, and wait for, you know, conditions to be right or for, or to get, you know, real, you know, absolute clear confirmation that you're doing things right. Because as long as there's that doubt there, you know, you're, you're, the mind will just, just uh, 
uh, he'll exploit that. <clears throat> Boy, this speaks to, um, I've heard uh, you, when asked what sort of the determining quality in monastic staying in robes was, I think you referenced stubbornness uh, as one of them at least. And I would appreciate that. Um, would you mind uh, speaking to, to that or to this, um, you know, there is such a focus on high attainment and meditation, but one thing that I've really felt uh, I've seen within um, the monastery is, is the power of sila and faith um, beautifully held to clean the heart in ways that sometimes, you know, that pure focus on technique that's so raised up in the West just doesn't manage to, um, you know, the whole discourse on effacement and all the ways that practice manifests. What is your feeling yeah. on, on that, that aspect of the path and how it inter interlocks with Western Buddhism at the moment, which is so focused on technique? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly, exactly it. There's that, those, those uh, again, those, those fundamental qualities that are part and parcel of the, yeah, the path leading to the ending of suffering. Um, it, it's quite explicit. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, we'd all like to have a shortcut. <laughs> you know, we'd all like it to be easy. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't always work that way. Um, so just being willing to, to stick with, uh, with and, and, you know, and obviously it, it takes a, a humility and, a, you know, real, real commitment to reflective investigation. Uh, to to understand these the, this this more clearly, um, but I think it's really helpful to keep grounding oneself in these fundamental roots um, uh, that 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 nourish the nourish the dhamma. <clears throat> Longpur, if you um, if you had to give young Abbot Longpur Pasano two pieces of advice. Um, or to new monks who aren't actually abbots, but are, you know, up here in Seattle doing, doing something. Um, what would that advice be, if we could ask? Uh, let's see. I mean, I would certainly, uh, um, yeah, just be a lot more kind to yourself and to others. Uh, you know, be a lot more patient with yourself and with others uh, that's that's kind of the you know that certainly uh, <clears throat> that sense of of uh, uh, you know those are probably the um, you know I, I you know I was an abbot and teaching and resp holding responsibilities and 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 all of that and and uh, uh, but but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I was able to create a fair amount of suffering for myself and I keep it going for quite some time. 